Hey everyone, welcome to Signal Processing with Paul. In this video, what I wanna do is give an intro and motivation to sampling. And what this will allow us to do is move from analog signal processing into digital signal processing. So if you think about the history of signal processing, we used analog signals for a long time. We represented things with analog circuits, capacitors, inductors, resistors, these sorts of things. And only in the recently, you know, really in the last 70 years or so, we've been able to store signals in a computer. And the great thing about this is, let's say you want to record yourself singing, you can sing, record yourself in a computer and hopefully get, you know, recall this signal and hear yourself if you want to, hopefully you're a good singer, something like this. So we're going to talk about how we can do this or how we can get in here. Now, the problem that comes up immediately, and this isn't super obvious when you think about it, is how do we get a, comp a signal into a computer? How do we get a waveform stored inside of a computer? And the first challenge is that, or the biggest challenge, the hardest part, is that computers are discrete entities. They have a finite number of transistors. They can only store numbers up to some finite precision, and they have a finite number of memory locations. So this makes it really, really difficult because we're trying to store something that we generally approximate with some sort of continuous function. So how do we get about storing this inside of a computer when we want to be able to basically have an infinite number of things that we're trying to store? So the first problem comes about when we look at our time index. So notice how when we have a function of a signal, we're going from some function of a real valued function, so this is, you know, r, and usually we get something that's also in the reals, which is a function of your amplitude. So if you look at your time unit, you can look at any given time, let's say here, and if I pick some time, what maybe this time is, is going to be 2.11348, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There are an uncountably infinite number of possible time intervals that you have. So how do we go about storing our signal if we can't possibly represent an infinite number of them? And one way to do this is to just basically sample it or approximate it with samples. So what I can do is just pick these points and hope that I get it, you know, enough samples that I can approximate my signal well enough. And what I can do is define the distance between these points as my sampling period TS, which is related to the sampling frequency, so one over FS, which this is sort of like the rate. So TS is like the time between samples and FS is like the rate at which samples are taken. And one of the results, and we'll talk about this result later, but this should be, you know, make you very happy, is as long as we sample fast enough at a rate called the Nyquist rate, you can actually represent your signal perfectly in the digital domain and you can reconstruct it. That's fantastic. I mean, this is a great result. This means we don't actually need to store an infinite number of points. We get around this issue by just sampling faster than twice the highest frequency in the signal that you have. And this is where you get things like, you know, 44.1 kilohertz or 48 kilohertz in CD players, these sorts of things. So that has to do with the sampling rate, which is related to the sampling frequency, these sorts of things. So that is fantastic, and we'll talk more about that later. Now, one of the things this should remind you of is if you remember in calculus what we did is you would have some function and you want to calculate the area under the curve, and you approximate this function by these sorts of boxes, right? You have boxes that you're using to approximate the function, and the box height is related to this function at specific points, and you know we take the limit as this delta x goes to zero to try to approximate the function. And what we're doing here is kind of the reverse. We're trying to say, can we approximate our function with a bunch of boxes? I mean, we're not really necessarily trying to store the area as much as the actual fun the function values themselves, but in a similar sort of way, can we do this and do this well enough so that we can store it without needing to go to infinity or without needing to take up a bunch of space? And the answer is we can do this at least when it comes to time. Now there's another problem and that has to do with amplitude. If you notice here with amplitude, what we have is another real valued point. So each of these amplitudes, maybe this is like 0 0.8763, et cetera, et cetera, also an uncountably infinite number of possible amplitudes. So we're gonna have this issue as well. And this is the one that we're always going to have a problem with because unlike the Nyquist rate sampling amplitudes, there's no real way to do this perfectly, you know, a priori. You know, there's, there's no guarantees that you have about having the exact amplitudes. But generally what we find is we can get good enough, and this has to do with your bit depth, which basically is how many samples you take along the amplitude. And then as a result, you basically, you have a grid now, and each of these numbers corresponds to a certain point in this grid, a certain 
time index and a certain frequency number in terms of number of samples. And now we've represented this as a finite number instead of needing to have continuous valued functions. So this is hopefully going to motivate our sampling. One of the ways in which we can do this is we can take our signal and we can multiply it. So here's our signal. We can basically multiply it by what's called a pulse train or an impulse train. And what our pulse train looks like, something like this, where the unit of this is basically. This is, this is the height of one for all of these. And when we multiply this signal, what we end up getting, because these are heights as one, is we end up getting scaled version of these pulses that are all scaled by the value of this function at each sample point. And this, once again, here we have our sampling interval, or sampling period, and then that's related to the sampling rate. And by doing this, this will allow us to store these numbers inside of the computer, and this will actually allow us to compute things like the Fourier transform using a computer rather than you having to do it either analytically or by hand, which uh, is not the most fun thing all the time. Well, I guess it's fun if you like doing these tables, but doing it for these signals, it very quickly gets very annoying. So we would like to rely on computers to do this, and we'll talk about how we can do this coming up. So hopefully this motivates sampling. I'll also have some videos on how we do this in a computer, and we're going to have fun both in MATLAB and Python. So see you in the next video.